Our guest in studio, Steve Catlett from the Berkeley County Commission. So nice to call them a commission once again. Steve, good morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good, good morning, morning to Steve. Be with you. Yeah. That Medicare thing's a big deal. I've been on it for five years, and um, I have nothing but good things to say about the program, though. But to get on it and all, people do get confused, and I'm glad, Jonathan, that you help people out with that. That's a very important aspect of our senior living so I appreciate that it's a it's a lot of fun we educate people and and help them enroll in the, the best plan for them yeah and what Matt does with the Christian athletes is just phenomenal and uh, I appreciate all your yeah. efforts in that direction too Matt that's Christ a wonderful that, thing so Steve's in a good mood this morning. I like that. Well, yeah. I'm in a good I'm in a good mood because the legislatures <laughs> may come through for us this week. It's uh, pretty exciting. I've, I've been yeah. really down, and um, mm. uh, we had like uh, three biggies, mm -hmm. and I have the golden egg, the silver egg, and the bronze egg. Which one? Or, do you or in baseball, if you want to say the home run, triple, or double. <laughs> Which in one? Basketball, the three point shot, the two point shot, or the free throw one, one, yeah. free throw <laughs> so anyway this is number two this is it's the two. silver egg or the triple or the home rule would be your two home pointer run. home rule would be your home run correct? home run rule home rule yeah. with the one percent was the golden egg for yeah. sure but and you, you the, may and get the, the impact run. fee though if we get that that'll be our second most uh it, it'll be a wonderful thing I, I can't tell you in the community how many people say to me almost daily uh why don't we charge these developers for building all these houses and, and you know and, and I heard you talking earlier with Mike Height they're going to pass it on to the buyer and I don't think there's any interest on the commission's part if we get this through that will make it so high that it's going to hurt young people buying a home and things you know we've got sense enough not to do that mm -hmm. but it, it's nice to see the growth putting money back into our community to help our community support it we've been begging the legislator I I've I email them every week almost uh, in the CCA, the County Commission Association, uh, I'm a board member on that now. I'm the legislative chair for our eight county region over here. And I've been, we have a conference call every Friday through the whole legislation session. And of course, we have summer and access, access strategies working for us. And she, she's done a great job on this, uh, this, this impact fee. This is a big deal. It really is a big deal. It's a tool that we need to combat the growth and help control it and handle it. And it's it couldn't be come at a better time. So now in saying that, mm -hmm. the difference between that and the one percent is the one percent would be a steady flow of income that you could actually go out and hire public safety employees and and know that income is gonna be there every year. Right. And as the population grows, the sales tax would grow with it. So it gets you covered. You can't use the impact fee money for, for, for staff and salaries and benefits because it's going to be this, you know, mm -hmm. and for those listening Lord happens radio, if, if 08 would happen again, it, it could go like this, you know. Yeah, right. So, so we have to use it for for bricks and mortar capital improvement type project. But there's a ton of them out there that can yes. help with the quality of life in this community, and not just the quality of life, but you know, we need a new uh, fire station in Beddington, North Berkeley County. But we're going to make it a multi-purpose facility that would be fire station, ambulance potentially a substation for the sheriff's department and make it a true public safety uh, building. Uh, that's that's one of the things that we would be able to use this funding for. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we're setting on land in Inwood that we want to build a park up there in Inwood that the South Berkeley County desperately needs. This could provide funding to get that done. You know, we've got a beautiful plan drawn up, $12 mm -hmm. million. Dollar, $12 million dollars, so. Steve, do you have a, a count over the last couple of years of how many if it's an estimate, how many new houses have been constructed in Berkeley I can, County? I can tell you what. Where, last year it was twelve hundred. Okay, uh, the highest I think was sixteen hundred a couple years ago. So okay. it's ranging from a thousand to sixteen hundred in that range, right. and it's been pretty steady. So what would I, you, now? Can you imagine? What would you regard so, as say, say if we had a five thousand dollar impact fee? Okay, on a thousand houses, that's five million a year. On twelve hundred, that's six million. On sixteen, that's eight million. I could go a long way in helping this community get some things done, believe me. Mm -hmm. uh, so, And just think if we had that fee in place over the last 20 years or 10 years even, look what we've missed out on. So to get this finally, we qualify for, for this thing other than the zoning situation. So it, it's an easy fix for us to make it work. And so we'll, we'll implement it as soon as we possibly can. And we're just going to have to develop our list of capital improvements, which we, which we hope to plan. You know, and, and, and I know, like, if it's a, there's money, in, uh, the growth is in South Berkeley, then you have to spend that particular money in that end of the county. But every end of the, every area of the county is growing, though, so it's not going to be an issue trying to spend the money in that section of the community. And 
Before we talk anymore, I did want to extend my prayers and thoughts out to uh, Commissioner Eddie Goganer. He lost his uh, older brother Friday, and uh, I know they're going through a difficult time. He was my age, 70 years old, and uh, Michael, and he passed on Friday. And um, just want to extend our thoughts yeah, and prayers I, out I was to not aware of that. Mr. Goganer. Same so. thing to the Goganer family from all of us. And uh, I certainly want to extend our appreciation to Summer, how hard she's worked. I, I was texting her back and forth all day yesterday because we knew the committee was going to meet and talk about this bill at 1 o'clock. They passed it in the, that committee unanimously. It passed the Senate a month ago, four weeks ago, 34 to 0 in favor of it. So we kept saying, come on, Lord, let's get this through the finish line, you know. So I think we got a real shot. And Mike, obviously, Hike was pretty positive about it this morning. Mm -hmm. So Very. Mike's, Mike's been a real warrior down there mike both mikes hornby and and height have been a real warrior down there fighting for us and trying to help us and uh, mm -hmm. we really appreciate your efforts you know steve there had and you, we haven't heard it as much the last couple of years mm -hmm. uh especially the last 12 months we haven't heard as much about the amount of money you're paying in the contract to access strategies for helping mm -hmm. lobby right. down in Charleston. Mm -hmm. Some folks feel that that's your job to do that, and the members of the House of Delegates and the Senate to represent the Eastern right. Panhandle's wishes in there. Right. Uh, do you think you could have gotten this through without the help of a lobbyist? Rob, I ran my campaign thinking they were paying them too much money, okay? I said I that during my campaign, and I was critical of it. Uh, after I got in office last year and I went to Charleston and saw her in action, and saw what they did. The, our, our big win last year, it wasn't a home run, it was a single or a double, we'll call it, but we got the transfer, property transfer tax accelerated. We weren't gonna get the full amount back from the state uh, is a 10 year plan. We got it now, we're gonna, in, within two years, it's, up, it's accelerated to five years now. Now, we're not talking a great deal of money, but we're still talking a couple million a year. So it's gonna be a help. So that was our win last year. It wouldn't have got passed, and, and here it is. We, we know our local people, we can talk to them all the time, but you gotta get the votes across the whole state. And the thing is, she's there every day and she has relationships with a whole lot of other delegates and senators that aren't from here. And that's what it takes to get something across the finish line. And so I, I changed, you know, and I, I admit I was wrong about it, okay? Now, is it a lot of money? Uh, yeah, it's it, we got it under a couple hundred thousand a year, but it's still, you know, a hundred plus thousand a year. But I don't think we would have got this bill passed if it gets us through Friday without her, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we could have lost $25 million that was going to our water district last year. It was falling through the cracks, and she discovered it and saved that money, you know? So we think it's, you know, it's it's obviously paying dividends, and as long as it is, and I think it's necessary. So well, I, I've changed, you know? I've changed mm -hmm. my mind about it. Well, and And believe me, if... If I if I thought it was a waste of taxpayers' money and stuff, then then I would say so and vote against it. But I I think she's done a a wonderful job, and obviously if she gets us across the finish line, phew, that's a biggie for us. I'm telling you, that's a biggie, and uh, we appreciate it. Believe well, me. It sounds like um, I mean just mathematically, it sounds yeah. like a right. slam dunk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you're talking a hundred, two hundred thousand bucks a year for lobbying, and you already got something that's going to get you a million or two a year and you got that big windfall where she found that that 25 million i mean that and, and you know something guys it's not always about the win either it's all sometimes it's about you know we spent more time in the last couple of weeks until this week uh fighting bills that were going to hurt us more so than trying to get some passed that were going to help us you know mm -hmm. and we got a couple of them knocked out you know which is which, good give us an example, well Steve. one was uh uh senator tar proposed a 33 percent increase on the jail per diem right I mean, you're talking for our county alone, it was going to be 750 to a million dollars a year increase. It was going to wipe out some counties. Got that removed. Um, there was uh, some other bills, you know, that that that, that weren't good. And um, so, you know, it's and, and there again, we can't be down there during the session for two months every day. And she's there every day and she's talking mm -hmm. to those people. And then when we are there, uh, she gets us in the door to talk to the right people that we need to talk to, not from here, but the other people in the state that we've built a relationship with so that when we need to get something passed, um, you know, it, it, it's about personalities and relationships and that's a big deal. And uh, she's well respected down there by the entire legislature and um, I think it's been a plus. So I'll continue to support that. Matt. So she hits a triple. She did. It, she, it was not yet, but it's. it's, it's You're feeling good. I'm She's feeling rounding second headed to third. I just can't so. imagine that they won't. <laughs> 
pass this yeah. in the law. I can't. With a 34 yeah. to 0 Senate vote, with a unanimous vote from the committee, I feel pretty confident that this thing's going to get through this week. So. All right. So you bulk up a little in the off season and you go for that home run again We're going for next the home year. Run next year. We're never going to give up on that one. Do, do you, do you feel do that's you? the one we really need because, right. Matt, it's, it's about we need safety, public safety right. employees, and we can't do it on uh, – we have to have a solid – source of funding to be able to hire those people you know we're getting ready to start our budget process thursday mm -hmm. afternoon and all the elected officers have been in front of us the sheriff's asking for the new sheriff uh, rob blair is asking for uh, you know five new deputies well the first year you hire those you gotta you gotta buy a vehicle for them all it's about 125 plus per deputy so mm. and I, I don't see how we're going to be able to do it probably uh if we had the one percent yeah. sales tax yeah it, it would get done so, and, and, and and we need help in the 911. We need help in – we need more paid firefighters in Berkeley County. Every volunteer station has asked for 24-7 coverage, and we only have one out of the five that's that's doing that now. And, you know, that's 75000 a, a firefighter, you know. So yeah. that's what we need the sales tax for is for those people. And, and when I talk to the community out there who are raising taxes – the one tax you can get away with is is a, is consumption tax because everybody pays it if you have money to spend on stuff but it's, you, you don't you, you don't pay it on food you've got 81 with 84,000 cars a day going through here so th we estimate 30% of that tax will be paid by out of county people and isn't that what you want instead of continuing to add fees on to the property owners in Berkeley County that have foot the whole bill for this thing for years and years so we're trying to take that relief right. off of our property. Owners. So while it won't get through this year, do you get the sense in talking with Summer and, and how things have gone that, that that you're pushing to a point that maybe next year will be the I year? I think we're getting closer. And, of course, the, the, the out this year was it's an election year, so no one's going to – and, and, you know, there's some truth to that, obviously. The, the, the House has to run every two years, you know. Yeah. It's like in, in Congress at the national level. they got to run every two years, so – and it was it was it it really probably didn't have a chance this year, but I tell you what it has done. We've gotten a lot of conversation going on about it, and everyone we've talked to understands. And and um, what we really need is a governor to come in office and say, "Hey, I'll support this." You know, we're we're the engine that's driving the Eastern Panhandle, that's driving the whole state of West Virginia right now. Uh, well, and you, all we're you, saying you have is, an Eastern Panhandle candidate this we're, year. We're, we're, yeah, mm -hmm. but what we're, what we're saying is, give us the tools to handle the growth. You know, you, they want us to grow. We're, you know, we're one of the few parts of the state that's growing. Which the state as a whole is still losing population. Well, I have a sales tax so, question for you. Yes, sir. Because the 81 traffic uh, coming up and down um, 81, you, you think about Martinsburg first mm -hmm. and off of exit 13, King Street, Foxcroft mm -hmm. Avenue. But isn't Foxcroft Avenue city of Martinsburg it tax is. revenue? So but, would you get but, anything from that? No, but the commons. It's all Berkeley County. Right. How about the Spring Mill exit with Walmart and all that down there? It's mm -hmm. all Berkeley County. South End. I mean, Edward well, Miller. This, this, is South the, this is the argument that I hear people yeah. making that Foxcroft goes to the city. So what's it does. the city's getting that one percent? Yeah, and the city's getting over five million a year. Our estimate that first year would probably be around eight million. We hope. And I'm tell you what, it it, it it would be the answer to our prayers to solve the dilemma we have in acquiring more public safety employees. Well, you've got to have a, a solid source of income to cover that. You just can't go out and hire them and then two years from now not have the funds to 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 pay them and well the rest of the state needs to understand that the better run we are the better our public safety is the more people move here the more houses get built the more state income tax gets sent down there for them to spend absolutely and keep down there a absolutely. majority uh for the counties that don't have any money i mean you would think they would want to give us whatever we wanted so that we can just keep keep this engine going yeah and it, like i said i really believe the senate is real close to the house is going to be the hard sell and that's my take is if we can get a governor to come into office and actually come out publicly and support right. that i think it would pass the house too i really believe that and uh, i've talked to all four of the candidates um and I tell you, we've got a good selection of candidates in the Republican primary for governor. Believe me, they're all quality people, okay? Uh, but we need someone to recognize the importance of Eastern Panhandle and what it means to this state, uh, but give us the tools to handle this growth. And that's all we're doing. We need more road money, mm -hmm. and we're working on that. There's some, there's some rumblings going on that we could be getting some. 
been pushing that ticket really hard. I serve on the MPO, which is a metropolitan planning organization that handles all the federal money that comes in here for roads. And Berkeley County needs a, a really commitment for nine west from Martinsburg to Hedgesville is our biggest mess. And of course, we all know about exit 12 and what a mess that is. It's getting improved somewhat with an extra lane out there soon, but we need more on that end too. So uh, we need help in, in many directions, but um, Long as the, we the, don't, the sales tax would be the biggie, though. As long as we don't put in too many more of those traffic circle. Well, things. <laughs> I think there's more coming, uh, Jonathan, because uh, circles, the, baby. The, the one on Rockcliffe Drive should be done here within the next few months. And mm -hmm. I, if you, it, you just have to understand when you're on the circle, you have the right of way. But, but uh, I think it's going to help that situation. Well, and but, but that's not the answer to all. I mean, of our I, under, I understand. I no understand. More I, under, stops, I understand that. No more four-way stops. But there are a heck of a lot of people that don't <laughs> understand it. <laughs> well, but I'm telling you, uh, to me, r we need an alternate route on 9 West, so there's two choices to make. To, because that, that traffic going out there, I, I drive it every day, okay? Mm -hmm. It's worse going home in the afternoon and evenings than it is coming oh, yeah. in the mornings. And we need to, and, and it, there's going to be more houses built on that, that road. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, there's there's more land available that's been sold that's going to get become housing. and. We need help desperately there. It's going to I've, be been, I've been proposing a, a bypass around Hedgesfield where you, you would get off where the post office is to the left and come out down and cross Allensville Road with the bridge over Allensville Road in the CSX tracks and come out down on 901. And then everybody that's traveling there to Spring Mills area and 81 yeah. North would use it, and they would use it coming home in the evenings as well. And it would alleviate a lot of the, the traffic uh, through Hedgesville. So, I like that. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I get frustrated all the time because, you know, not that they don't need it, but Berkeley Springs is getting a bypass. They're, they're building it now as we speak off 522 there. So, mm -hmm. so the town of Bath doesn't have to. You come up 9 and you can go south, uh, I guess it would be north and south, uh, yeah, south and north, and, and bypass the town of Bath, you know. Well, you know, Morgan County's got 18,000 people. They haven't grown hardly at all over the last decade. We've got 135,000 well, people mean, here now, and we're getting over 3,000 a year more, and we need help with the roads. Well, in their defense, that is going to eliminate a minute to a minute and a half of traffic every day. Hey, 522 can back up, man. <laughs> yeah, it can. 522 can back up. But, it, it can. but it's uh, and it, you know, uh, good for them. I'm, I'm not, you know, but I'm just saying. Well, there are a lot of folks in Morgan County who are against that bypass well, for I shop owners they because they didn't want know, business being oh, yeah, the business way. I, I yeah. get it, but. You know, but uh, where where's the growth? Berkeley County by far, not not even close. Montegalia was thirteen thousand. We were twenty well, the last do, census. Do you? But we're growing now at a much faster pace. Do you talk to people from the Department of Highways? Oh yeah, all the time. What do they tell yeah, you? Went in Charleston. Uh, no plans. No plans. No plans. Well, that's changing right now. Okay, and uh, I just got an email yesterday from Matt uh, Mullinex of the, the right. MPO, and Matt said, Steve, the, the, uh, they they've requested money for the study. Well, you know, we've had a study on nine west for 40 years right there. Six different alternate routes to what's right. it. Yeah. So let's quit studying the thing and just get something done. That's <laughs> yeah. all we're saying. Put some shovels in and, the dirt. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The people who study stuff have certainly made some money, though. <laughs> yeah. We should so, make a study well, on people who do stuff. Yeah, let's, uh, let's well, do that. <laughs> we, we set up a meeting last year when uh, Commissioner Gogan and I went over to the DOT and met with their top officials. Uh, Riston was in D.C., so he wasn't there, but the, the next top for three or four were. And I said, guys, I said, just just be honest with me here. Is there any plans that no, no plan, no plan? I said, so if you sit here and, and, and send me a little note across the table and say, here's a check, we're going to start project in Berkeley County tomorrow, okay? I said, how long will it be before the first car drives on it? Five years? They said, at least. You know what I'm saying? So Five, Five's optimistic, man. Five's yeah. optimistic. And then they said, at least that long, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we got to get something in the books now to get it started here. Right. Man. Like I said, it's over 3,000 a year coming in here. And, and you think, listen to this too. Here's another stat. Blows you away. All right, they're going to continue to decrease the, the state personal income tax for the state. All right. By the time, they, they said a year ago, if they would have eliminated it all at one time, that within two years, 400,000 people would move into West Virginia. And they want that bad. You think they're all going to southern West Virginia? No. Where are they coming? I think 100,000 huh? of them are going to try to move here. Absolutely. They won't be able to get their moving vans Absolutely. down Route 9. <laughs> You're right. So as, as more people fluctuate in, if they keep reducing this tax, 
then help us out here, people. We need roads. We need help. Well, we need a one percent sales. You've tax. got a Senate president right now. You've got a House Majority Leader. You have a Judiciary Chairman, all in powerful positions, right? And uh, in between the Senate and the House, and uh, right now, Daryl Coles is one of the liaisons to the to the mm-hmm. governor. So you should be able to get some juice out of that, shouldn't you? Talk to him all the time, Rob. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I know Senator Blair is working on the road money. He really is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can't say a whole lot about it, but I know he's working on it hard to try to get some money for Nine West in particular. So, Hey, before we uh, run out of time, you have a new Parks yeah. and Rec director. Uh, yes, they hired uh, Joe Burton. Um, Joe, uh, I knew Joe from way back because he was involved in travel soccer in Berkeley County for a long time. And then for several years, he was the maintenance supervisor, uh, general manager, whatever, for the school system. And then he left there and went over to Washington County in the same position, but then uh, applied for the parks job when it became available and was hired here, I guess, in mid, mid-January. mid mm-hmm. so, Talked to him yesterday, matter of fact. I stopped in the offices and signed something uh, and spoke to him. So I uh, wish him nothing but the best, and hopefully uh, things work out. And, um, you know, we, uh, you know, this, this uh, bill, if it gets passed, could have a— on parks traumatic impact on our park system you know help out with that you know mm-hmm. develop in would develop other places and we've got to put more money in our, our quality of life here in berkeley county with the growth that's coming because they're not making any more land we got to set some yeah. aside for the future mm-hmm. hey I, kn- I know you're a modest fellow but uh can you tell me why has it been so difficult to replace steve catlett as the parks and rec director i'm, I'm not going to comment on that Rob. i mean i i just I, I haven't been involved in any of that. I wasn't, and, uh, you know, it's just, I just, I, believe me, nobody wants our park system to thrive and do better than Steve Catlett, okay? Mm-hmm. I, I put my whole life into that thing for 45 years. I want to see it thrive, and now I'm on the other end. I hope we can get some tools to help that effort to make our park system the best in the whole state of West Virginia. So, so when, uh, I, when I, I talked to Eddie Gokenauer, and he said that he thought, that he overcompensated when he became a commissioner. But since he was so involved with fire and EMS, he wanted to stay away from it for a while, and he thought that was a mistake. He should get more involved in it. Should you get more involved with the park system? I, I think I'm involved enough. You know, Eddie's our representative from the county, and I really am too close to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I know, but, uh, but I am. But uh, they're, they're, I'm their biggest supporter, okay, and I'm going to be there to hopefully back them and try to do what I can to make it better and uh but I think it's better that I'm, I'm a, at a little distance right now than, than right there in the day-to-day. Um, it's, you know, it was time for a change. It was time for me to move on, and, and uh, I want to see him flourish. And I, I want to be on the part of it that, you know, we're, we're, we're providing funding to, to make it happen, you know. Mm-hmm. So, hey, uh, 30 seconds left. Final thought mm-hmm. from you. Well, just uh, this bill is tremendous. Uh, it could be a, a real um, – it's not going to be a game changer. It's one percent the game changer, but it, it could be a real help to our, our needs. And uh, – I uh, I hope it gets through the uh, House this week. I've been begging them all to vote for it, and I think they will, hopefully. So, But thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Steve, it's the most shocking information you. revealed in this segment was that you're 70 years old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no way. I, I'd never guess 70 years old. Well, you're yes, a young-looking man. Good for you. Good seeing you guys. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you, Steve. Steve.